of the 7 billion people on the planet in 2022, 1.5 billion of them were in pain. In the U.S. alone, $635 billion is lost in production dollars a year due to pain. However, you and I both know that pain is so much more than money and production loss. It involves a loss of self-esteem, of self-confidence. It can um, create a loss of relationships and of, of even jobs. So today you're going to hear how pain works its way into your body. Some techniques that you, you can use to aid yourself in relieving that pain and a bit of the science behind it. In my opinion, the reason pain can be so hard to treat and cure is because it takes engaging the body, mind, and spirit in the healing. And that means moving past the Newtonian laws of gravity and cause and effect into the rules of quantum physics. And there are three rules we're going to focus on. The rule of entanglement, the rule of superposition, and the rule of non-locality. Entanglement states that once particles have been together, they affect each other. And the more often and the closer they are together, the more exposure they have to one another, the more easily they affect each other. So imagine a storm is raging. And, you know, you don't care so much about the storm until you remember your car windows are open, open. And then it really matters. The other, another one is superposition. And that states that a particle can be in multiple states at the same time until focus is given. And then all other options just collapse. Like a simple example of this might be you walk into Old Navy looking for a shirt and they have a ton of colors of t-shirts there for you. And you're looking and deciding. And once you decide that you want that blue shirt, you pick it up and you carry it to the checkout. All those other options are open, but you decide on that blue shirt and walk out with it, all the other options have fallen away. And then we have non-locality, which challenges Newton's cause and effect law. And entanglement Entangled particles change instantly with each other. Forget the speed of sound. As soon as one particle over on the East Coast gets stimulated and changes, particle on the West Coast changes just like that. So deciding on a course of action has all the other options falling away and it sets the wheels in motion for you to move forward or for that um, intention to be become a reality. So consider if you consider yourself a, to be an athlete, you are going to move like an athlete. You're going to move more. You're going to walk with a different walk. If you consider yourself to be a healthy eater, you're going to just drive by fast food restaurants. And if you consider yourself to be worthy, you're going to go out and get that degree, that partner, 
that home. You'll go to that event that you want. So decide right now to harness that new way of looking at science. Decide to be open-minded and curious about what you hear today about being pain-free. Lori had used kinesio tape and ice on her knees for hours after playing one hour of hardcore tennis. And even with that, she experienced pain and swelling. Physical therapy just wasn't working for her. And she didn't like taking so many painkillers. And after her training with the techniques, some of which you're going to learn tonight, this was what she said. My knees hurt from years of pounding from hard court tennis. And Sally released the pain and taught me how to take care of my knees in a different level, a way I'd never heard was available, much less possible. So I'm asking you to follow the advice of Eleanor Roosevelt and value your curiosity. She said, I think at a child's birth, if a mother could ask the fairy godmother to endow it with the most useful gift, that gift would be curiosity. And today we begin that journey by being curious and observing your best compass, your body. Because far too often, we are told to work through the pain, our physical pain. We take a pill to deaden it. You put your nose to the grindstone and don't let up. You man up, you muscle through. And even Disney's gotten on board with this, with muscle up buttercup. But buried pain only goes deeper. From my personal experience and the relief I've witnessed from my clients, I've come to the realize that pain, physical and emotional, needs to be expressed. Needs to be expressed. And emotions that are not given expression through tears can cause organs to weep. So what does that mean? There is a correlation between unexpressed emotion and physical ailments. Just read the book, The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. So who am I not? I'm not a doctor. I'm not gonna fix you. And what I say is not for everyone. But I do hope by the end of our time together, you'll have a new idea of something that might work for you. Maybe not, but you've learned something different. And you've learned to look at things differently. So I am just a mom. I am a mom who worked hard, had two kids. Sounds familiar to many of you. Um, my husband worked lots of hours and I was at the end of my rope. I was smiling on the outside and miserable on the inside. And I put a lot of pressure on myself as a lot of us do to make sure our kids are taken care of with good nutrition. But that wasn't enough. I would come home and I would yell at my beautiful children to get them moving on to the next activity. And it wasn't until my husband looked at me one day and laughed. And it wasn't just a chuckle. It was a 
huge belly laugh stopped me in my tracks. And that's when it hit me. You know those insights you get, that light bulb that goes on in your head, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's not everything around me. It's me. It's me. And when the student is ready, the teacher appears, and I started getting mailings in my mailbox, and friends would tell me about this person who was doing that, and this therapy that was doing this, and a mentor who was going there, and co-workers would take me to mind-opening events, and I was learning so much more. And I experienced so many modalities and ex and explored many therapies. My pain began to dissolve. My world around me began to change and peace came to my home. And Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. So I'm going to experience, we're going to experience right now a little bit about the power that humans have to recreate an emotion and a physical response just by using your mind. So I do this with my hypnosis clients, but I promise I'm not going to hypnotize you tonight. But I do want you to just play along with me. Just close your eyes for a moment and take a nice deep breath in. Notice your feet on the floor. Notice your bum sitting in your chair. If you're driving, of course, you're not going to do this. And just take a couple deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And just feel that air go into your lungs and out. And I'd like you just to imagine that you have a bag of salt and vinegar chips right there in front of you. And whether you love them or hate them, just play along with us. So you reach forward and you grab that bag and you can hear the little crinkling of the bag and you pop it open and the smell of those chips hits your nose. The acrid scent goes right up. And pay attention to what's happening in your body. You may notice muscle response. Notice the saliva in your mouth. And as you reach into that chip and bring it up to your nose, you get a little more of the smell of the chip, that acidy, vinegary scent. And you touch the chip to your tongue and your salivary glands explode in preparation for digesting that chip. And that, my friend, is the power of your mind to create anything you want just with your thought, to recreate a feeling in your body, an experience in your body with your mind. So we're going to play with that tonight. So let's begin by unpacking the three avenues of pain experientially. Because over the years, I'm going to show you what I learned. I learned that working with others to guide them to pain freedom it became clear to me that there were three ways that pain worked its way into your body. Physical, mental, and emotional. So we're going to start 
by noticing which of those avenues is primary for you. Which one is the most effective for you and how your best way to move forward might be. Because knowledge is power. So again, take a moment and just settle in and notice an area in your body. And when I say settle in, I mean just kind of pay attention to your body. And most of us are taught, you know, live in your head all the time. But we have a body. Let's use it for its best. It can be a compass. Not only does it get us around where we need to go, but it can give us a lot of feedback. I mean, you've walked into a room and it doesn't feel right. You know, you just said, uh, it just doesn't feel right to me. Or mm, it just didn't appeal to me, right? It just doesn't resonate with you. And that's your body talking to you. You didn't rationalize. They say that people will buy with their emotions first or decide with their emotions and then they use their head to convince them that it's worth the purchase. So that is, I mean, that's in research. That is in salespeople all over the world. They get you hooked with the emotion and then make the um, rationality so your mind can get on board. And it's okay. But when you know that that's happening, that's even better because then you are using more than just here to figure out what you want. So I digress. So let's get started with your physical body. Okay. And remember, we're being curious, we're playing. And you can imagine this because you just experienced it with the salt and vinegar chips. Okay. So sit back and relax. So you're just going to take a couple breaths and you're going to notice the discomfort, any kind of tension in your body. It might be, um, it might be a zing. It might be an ache. It might just feel a little stuck. Maybe it's stiff or tense. Notice an area that comes to mind first for you. It might be a familiar area or it might be new to you right now. It doesn't matter. So just settle in and just see if you could give yourself a level of pain between one and 10 with one being not noticeable very much at all to 10 being like, cut it out, you know, just cut that body part off. I don't want to have to deal with that. So give yourself a number. Remember that number. You can write it down if you want. And now think of going to work or cooking a meal. And you're just cooking a meal and you are going about your business or you're driving to work, you've gotten to work, you're walking into the building, going to your workspace, your office, and you start your first task. And just notice your pain level. Notice what's happening with your body. Notice just the physical tension of sitting where you're sitting or moving how you're moving. And as you're cooking, cutting the vegetables or mixing or blending, just notice any kind of discomfort that you might have. And that's just another baseline. Did it go up a little bit when you started moving or did it stay pretty much the same? And then you start working. So that's the physical avenue of pain. And then you start working and you're working along and all of a sudden the boss comes in and puts extra work on your, on your, um, 
pile or a client calls up and wants 10 more of something or or, or you just find out that uh, instead of the three of you having dinner, it's going to be your your son is bringing a friend with him or your husband is bringing home friends from work. Uh, one extra boy is equal to at least three adults, right? So <laughs> it's a lot more food you've got to deal with. So it just puts a little more pressure on you've got everything or do you, can you make it work? And with the time frame at work, you know, just imagine you just got loaded up with more work and you need to get out on time. So you've got this time crunch going on. There's a time crunch. Just notice how it feels when you feel rushed. You just feel rushed. What happens? Check in with that pain area. What happens to your pain area when you feel that pressure of, of needing to kind of speed it up and get it done? Give it a number. Yeah, and just just write that down, okay? And so now you notice you, that one of the people that's coming to dinner tonight has had this meal that you're cooking before. And they didn't look like it was one of their favorites. They didn't say anything necessarily, but the look on their face uh, just wasn't, you know, you could tell it wasn't tasty to them. Or you find out that the client that you are having to give this report to is really not, not in your corner. They usually pick your work apart. They, they wonder how incompetent that, you know, they doubt your competency. Uh, you, you, it just, they're just not nice. They're grumpy. They're mean. Notice the thoughts that are going through your head. What's happening and what's happening with that added pressure? What's happening in your body with this feeling? Yeah. So just notice. And what's your pain level now? Number from one to 10. And just notice. So if you're like most people, your pain level increases tremendously with the emotional tension that goes through your body. However, right now, it's time to learn a pain relief exercise that's more on the physical aspects because that is the avenue most of us look at first when we're looking for pain relief. Understandably so. Our bodies hurt. Must be my body. <laughs> but this one's so easy a three-year-old can do it. In fact, it's the very one I used on Colton. And in 30 minutes, Colton got the following results. In fact, I'm just going to let your dad tell you. My two-year-old Colton has had chronic ear infections and fluid in his ears for the past one and a half years. He was on antibiotics six or seven times, and the ENT found no problems. None with his adenoids or tonsils, and we consider getting tubes put in, but there are dangers associated with that, and the timing was always off in terms of getting an available appointment for an evaluation and so forth. So I took him to see Sally, and it has been over four months since our visit, and I am so happy, so happy 
that Colton has neither tugged on his ear nor been in a bad mood because of his ear pain and discomfort. Joseph Horn, Vienna, Virginia. So I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, this, why this works. Why does this energy work? So I hope you can see these. Look at me in, my, in the little box down here. And I want you to just take a look at these um, coat hangers. They're just bent coat hangers and I'm holding them rather loosely in my hands. And as you can see, they're kind of moving around a little bit and I'm just not even focusing on them at all. I am just letting them go the way they want to go. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the tips. I'm bringing my attention to the tip of them. And now I'm going to turn and look that way. My attention is the only thing going here. I think this would be a fun experiment for you to do at home. Just a gentle gripping. And the main thing that you do here is you let your mind be crazy, crazy busy, like multitasking. And then you bring your focus down to the tip of the coat hanger. And you will see how your focus can change what's happening. So we're going to learn this exercise that does include focus. All right. So you're going to take your fingers and you're going to make a V and you're going to take your pointer finger and say, my jaw hurts here. My TM joint hurts there. I'm going to take my other hand and I'm just going to direct the energy, that same focus that we were talking about just a second ago. And I'm going to create my focus. Pay attention here. Come on back to me now. And I'm just going to do that. Now, if your pain's on your knee, you can do the same thing. If your pain is hard to reach wherever you can reach gently and comfortably do and remember the potato chips just imagine if you can't reach it that you are doing that exercise on that area of pain so if you can't reach your back reach if you can but if you can only get the front then just do it from the front and imagine your hand in the back. Okay? So that's what you're going to do with this exercise. We're going to give you two minutes. Two minutes. I'm going to start the timer. And you're just going to relax. And you're going to do that. And we'll check in with your pain after. And we have one more minute. You're doing great. This is just how long it takes for you to brush your teeth with your power brush. You can do it. You can do it. Just notice how that feels. And think happy thoughts. 
if you're using this for a young child, you tell them to think of ice cream or hanging out with their friend or playing what they love to play. And you can do the same thing for yourself if you're having a hard time just focusing. Just think happy thoughts. Almost there. Good. Very good. So this exercise is so powerful. If you want to, I'm going to tell the story of um, Dr. John Upledger while and you may continue to keep your hands there as i tell this story so dr john was a osteopath who worked with autistic children and while he was working um, with these children you know some of the moms were interested in what was um, going on with their kids and and some um, moms decided that this was a well-deserved break and they just went off and did something uh, for themselves. And so what Dr. John did was he um, shared with the moms who were with him. He was a teacher, so he shared with the moms the exercises that he was doing on their kids. And he noticed that the kids whose moms were learning the exercises and doing them for the kids at home progressed nicely. They didn't have the three steps forward, two steps back kind of experience that the kids whose moms who weren't as involved um, with their home therapy. And through that, Dr. John came up with a 10 step protocol that he taught to people with licenses like me. And this is one of the techniques that he taught us. It's also one that he used on himself when he stepped on a rake and hit himself in the eye. The pain was excruciating. He put his hand over his eye and ran into the house and laid on the bed. He was so afraid. I mean, he did not know. It was so bad. And he put his hand, he did this exercise using his energy finger and his, and his V spread. This is called the direction of energy. And he did direction of energy and he did it over his eye kept his eye closed. He doesn't, he says, I don't know how long I laid there. It could have been 10 minutes. It could have been five hours. He doesn't know. But when the pain would ebb and flow and come and go, and it got really intense, and then it would go down. That's energy in motion. I mean, that's what happens a lot of times. So don't stop if you feel something getting worse and then getting better or heat or pulsing or yawning, all really good signs. So he laid there and finally, or then he heard this pop, pop, and he, pain just went away and he took his hand off his eye. And the pain was gone. And he looked around the room and he could see. He went to the mirror and his eye was fine, except, well, except for it was red. But he could see. And that's the power of this exercise. That's the power of the energy that you carry around with you every single day. So I'd like you to just take a moment and check in right now. And I ask you, what's your pain level right now? On a scale of one to 10, with one being not so bad, 
to 10 being, oh my gosh, excruciating. What is your pain level? And write it down. Write it down. And so the direction of energy technique or V spread is one of the easiest exercises you can do. You can modify it to work for you in position and everything. And it's so easy a three-year-old can do it. So you think happy thoughts, hold your hands on either side of the pain. You can go that simple and experience the power, the healing power of your mind and body. So when can you personally use the direction of energy technique? Think about that. Jot a couple notes down, because if you write it down, then it'll happen, right? So think about, um, would you use it if, as you're sitting in the car at a stoplight? Could you use it when you're in a team meeting or at a parent teacher conference? In a movie, reading your emails? Who could you share it with? Because you learn, you practice, and you teach. And that's how you get really good at doing something. So I want to teach you another experience that's going to not only relax your central nervous system, it is going to release some of the tension and pain in your neck. And this is called the still point induction because what it does is it slows down your central nervous system and rebalances it. When we're feeling frenetic, when we're feeling out of sorts, when we're feeling like we are scattered all over the place or can't catch up, this works beautifully. So you can learn that you can use this anytime at night or day. Um, some of my clients will use it to go to sleep at night. But what they will do is they will just um, take a moment and relax, put their hands behind their heads, just like the guy, old guys in the movies used to do, put their feet up on the desk and cradle their heads, kind of down so the middle fingers are like along the base bone of your skull, right at the base of your occiput. If this is not available to you, never fear. You can get some um, racquetballs or tennis balls and put them in a sock. Shove them in the sock, tie a knot real tight and lay on that. If you fall asleep that way, it's okay. Again, you might notice a pulsing, heat, um, maybe even movement. You might feel your neck muscles just unwinding. Um, I will often have like, I'll have my shoulders up and I'll feel my shoulders drop. Uh, it's an amazingly relax, amazing, relaxing thing. Big size can happen with this. I'm also going to have some, uh, an, a place where you can get this, uh, something different. It looks like this. This is a cranio cradle. It looks like this. And I'm going to, um, in the, there's going to be a link to resources and you'll get a lot of information on that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to also take two minutes for this and we are just going to cradle our necks and notice, notice what's happening. You can either interlace your fingers or you can just lay them on top of each other.
And so this is also working on the emotional level, even though it doesn't seem to be. Because it brings the balance between your left and right sides of your brain relaxes your central nervous system. This is a great way to lower blood pressure. It's been found to lower blood pressure in some. We've got 40 seconds left. You're doing really well. Very good. So take a moment. Take a moment and check in with your pain. What number would you give it now? Your pain or tension? So if you had a story like Colton or Lori, what would it be? Now remember that feeling and the rule of entanglement, because once you felt how you feel right now, you can feel it again anytime you want. Mm -hmm. your tissue remembers it just remember it in your mind know that if you want something the solution is out there for you and you may have gotten everything you need or want and i'm delighted for you bless you go out and live your best life but if you want to know more i piqued your interest or you got some pain relief and would like to know how to make that pain freedom a constant in your life then we need to talk because sometimes people want to learn how to do something for them. And sometimes people want to be nurtured and either way it's okay. I'd be delighted to talk with you over a no obligation phone call. You'll call, we'll talk, You'll tell me more about yourself and what you want. And if I think I can help you and you want to know more, then we'll set up another time to talk. And the link to connect with me is on this resource page as are tips for um, supporting your body, your mind and your emotions with um, lifestyle suggestions, 
food choices, and supplements. So check out this resource page. I also have a, a, a free offer on, on self-care in there, 10 tips that are free or super low cost for um, DIY self-care. So check that out. So I would love to hear what you learned today. What turned a light bulb on for you? So please share with me. You can reply to this email. You can email me at sally at yourblissfuljourney.com. And you can also go to that resource page and just drop me a note and tell me what you liked and what I can do better, what you would have liked to have heard instead. So thanks a lot for your time. You gave me your most valuable resource. I can't thank you enough. Go out. <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> All right, my friend. Take care. Bye for now.